Hello everyone and welcome to a Genji Guide for Console, something which I myself haven't really seen much of on YouTube so I hope this is helpful to a lot of you. Most of the guides I see are for PC. As always I'm playing on Xbox One but more or less everything in this video is also applicable to PS4. I'll be taking a lot of concepts from PC and showing when these concepts can be used on console and when they might not be used. I think just staying in the practice range is quite dull, so what I'll do is spend some time going through Genji's mechanics in the practice range, and then talk through some of my actual gameplay to give you an understanding of what I'm doing. Before I do get started, just a disclaimer and a couple of small things, which I will be waffling on with, so I'll put a time in the description and an annotation on the video so you can skip that part. Um, one of my videos which is currently my most popular was a competitive game with Genji, and this is probably one of the worst games I've put on my channel, but it's also the most popular, so that's a shame. I just want to stress that this is not how I usually play, so please don't judge what my ability is like based on that video alone, and I hope you enjoy some of the other videos. Also, at the moment I'm around rank 4150 SR, which is around 80th in Europe on Xbox. My season high is 4,203, which was ranked 56 in Europe at the time. Last time I checked, I was the 47th best Genji on overbuff, so in no way am I claiming that I'm the best Genji around, but I feel that I'm good enough to share some wisdom through this video. I hope that you do enjoy this video, and that is the boring stuff out of the way, so let's get on with it. Firstly, I'm going to suggest that you watch my controller setup video, which shows my personal setup. This helps so, so much with playing Genji, because that allows you to jump and aim at the same time. And if you feel like you have a good setup, then you can just ignore this part, move on. I'm playing on 100 aim assist. That's just what I'm used to. You can reduce it to about 80, maybe 70. I would not go lower than that, otherwise you'll start to get punished for it. But at these levels you can kind of feel the aim assist getting less in the way. At 100 sometimes it is quite too strong. I'm just on 100 because that's what I'm used to. It's important to note that aiming with Genji shurikens on console is so much harder. In fact a lot of projectile characters like Genji, like Konzo, are harder just because of aim assist. So that's why you might want to turn it down, it will just get in the way. At close range, you'll want to use the alt fire like this, and that's about as far away as you should do it most of the time. You shouldn't go further away and use alt fire, otherwise the spread will be too large and you'll just be not doing enough damage. Genji's alt fire and primary fire can both be animation cancelled by his melee or his dash. Here I'm using his alt fire, animation cancelled by his melee, and here I'm using his alt fire, animation cancelled by his dash. Both of these combinations work really well on low health targets to do a lot of burst damage, so they'll find it hard to recover from that, and if you do it right you should kill them and you get a dash reset. You can use that dash reset to kill another target in the same way, or to escape to safety. Each shuriken does 28 damage on the body, 56 on the head. That is enough to kill any 200 HP hero in two moves, like this. Obviously in game no one's as stationary as a training bot, so I'd recommend just using a few alt fires without melee first, just to weaken them, get them down to a low health where you can combo them. If you melee after every single shot then your rate of fire is going to decrease and it's not going to be useful. At medium to long range, you won't want to use your alt fire because the spread is too large, it won't do enough damage. So instead you'll need to use your primary fire and try and do chip damage at long distance. Usually you won't be able to kill anyone like this because by the time you've done enough damage they'll have run away or try and find cover. So instead, what you should do is try and take about half the health off and then move in for a new combo. This combo is similar to the short range combo, except it has a melee at the end. Use your primary fire, then a dash, then a melee. On PC this works most of the time because the melee can be directed in any direction you want because there's no limit to the sensitivity, you can snap to targets. 
On console, however, you can't do this because there is a sensitivity limit and you may not be able to turn 180 and do it in time. So instead, I would just use the primary fire, the dash, and then treat it like a short range encounter. And by that, I mean do the combo I spoke about previously, where you use alt fire and melee. I haven't spoken about deflect much because it's not necessarily an offensive ability. It should mainly be used to counter other abilities such as flashbang or soldier's helix rockets. This is to mainly stop you from dying and you could also take out the enemy in the process. Uh, I will now go through all the other heroes in the game and how you should encounter them as Genji, what you should do to try and win that conflict. As Genji, you should try and prioritize squishy targets. Tanks are not really your responsibility, and if they're running three tanks, you should probably switch to something a bit more stable in DPS, such as Soldier or Reaper. Diva's quite hard to take on yourself, so you should try and get a teammate with you to help that. Reinhardt, you can kind of spam the enemy fire at his shield at the start of the game with your deflect. I like to do that a lot. Roadhog's all about timing your deflects. There's a brief window where you can't deflect his hook because his hook has a shorter cooldown than your deflect. You should get into practice of getting into cover in these moments. Stay away from Winston and from Zarya if they're high charge. Especially Winston. When you're against another Genji, it's really about aim and who can get the best deflect almost. If you can deflect their shots into them, then you're golden. McCree, you need to time your f deflects for his flashbang. A good McCree can still flashbang you though, depending on where they place it, so it's down to a bit of luck sometimes. Farah is kind of your counter. If they have a Farah, you should consider switching off Genji and going for a hit scan like Soldier. Reaper, you should try and deflect his shots right into his head. Only do this at really close range and almost give him a couple of shots at the start of the encounter to make him feel confident. Soldier has a healing station which he needs to use before you encounter him at close range. Otherwise, if he puts his healing station down and you're at close range, he will probably kill you. Sombra is... well, she's not that high of a pick at the moment, but honestly I'd probably try and leave her alone because she's quite a small target to hit and try and get a tank to help you with that. Trace is also very hard. You can time your deflect in between her reload so that she starts shooting just as you deflect and aim right for her head. Bastion, you counter. I would usually dash toward him and try and deflect. Honzo is another one where you have to time your deflect just between his shots, so he feels confident enough to shoot you. Junkrat is annoying as Genji. Um, you should try and deflect his shots and honestly try and take him out at long range, because he can't do much at long range. Mei is another one of your counters. Um, try and get teammates for that, it's quite unlikely you'll 1v1 her. A lot of people think that you are a counter to Torbjorn as Genji, but honestly I find it the other way around. Try and take out the turret at long distance, and Widowmaker is probably the most satisfying person to deflect a headshot against. Um, that is probably about it for the DPS. Anna's terrible. You should try and, if you see Anna use her grenade, move in then, because the grenade is the only thing that protects her in a Genji encounter. Lucio is just evasive and annoying to hit. Mercy is, well, you should anticipate her, um, her flight because she will try and dash to her teammates when you're attacking her. So try and anticipate that, and if she goes to a tank, run. Symmetra counters you as well. She's quite hard to deal with as Genji. Try and long distance her, maybe try and flank her, but always have a dash ready to escape. Zenyata is quite deadly to Genji. If he can get a couple of headshots with Discord on, you're dead quite quickly. So I would run straight away if you feel that you're not going to win that encounter. Now, this is the big one. 
your Dragon Blade, your ultimate. A single swipe does 120 damage, and your dash, as usual, does 50 damage. Now, when you use your ult, you get an extra dash, so you can combo like this. You can dash into the air, and then ult, dash again. That is quite good for maneuverability and you can get to places that you wouldn't usually expect a Genji to get to which gives you the edge of surprise on your opponents. Because of the damage your Dragon Blade does it usually takes two swipes for every 200 HP hero to kill them. However if you have a Mercy damage boost or a Ana Nano boost you're able to dash and one swipe them which makes it very nice because then you can get a dash reset and just repeat the process on another 200 hp hero with an ana nano boost you can actually do this to a 250 hp hero like may or reaper which is useful because usually once you've hit them once they start to go into wraith form or cryo freeze so that makes it nice to take out those targets quickly here you can see that a dash and a swipe does not kill soldier. When you're ulting you should use your dash to move to the next target that you want to kill. After you've killed that target with your swipes you should then dash again to the next target, rinse and repeat. Try not to waste your dash because if you dash to a place where there are no enemies then you could find yourself ulting and there's no one to kill. Oftentimes when you want to ult, you should think about the support ults that the enemy team has. If they have a Zenyatta, you should maybe try and kill the Zenyatta before you start ulting. The same with Lucio. Although if you are synergizing with your Zarya to maybe get them into a group and Graviton an ult, then the Lucio ult might not do that much because you can kind of power through it if you ult quick enough. I will now move on to some gameplay that I recorded. Um, it's only a quick play which I was put into quite late in the game, but I still think it's quite valuable to look at how all these things can be put into practice in a real life game. So this is a game that I was put in, I actually put on defense and I wouldn't usually play defense Genji because it's quite a lot harder to play. You have to really try not to die. Um, so it is quick play. So the team composition is not what it should be, um, quite obviously. So a lot of this play won't be similar to a real life game. Here I'm just waiting for the character models to load. Okay, so I see McCree and I'm trying to do some chip damage, but he's beaten me to a few shots. So I'm gonna heal back up, wait round the corner. I see that they've got two snipers and I'm taking a lot of damage, so I'm just going to heal up again. I've just joined the game, so I'm not sure on what their team composition is. And I'm trying to size them up, see what I can do. There are a lot of squishies. That was a great Honzo ult. There was not much I could have done about that, so I had to rely on my team to contest the point until I came back out again. So you can see that was really well placed. I'm taking damage from all over the shop. I'm quite worried about the Honzo at this point. I move in to kill him with the combos I was talking about earlier. I come back to get healing. I'm looking at my health quite a lot, a lot of the time. Roadhog was hacked then, so there wasn't a lot of danger in taking him on, especially as there are a large group of teammates nearby. So they're all on the respawn now. They should group up if they want to take the point. Traces over here, I'm going to try and finish her off, but someone else does the job for me. Again, there are snipers in the back lines which I don't really want to encounter because they have the potential to one-shot you. So I'm trying to do long distance damage. You see I deflected a shot there that I thought was going to hit me. You should always assume that your enemies are going to be really good at the game. So always be careful, especially on defense. I saw Tracer was on low health there, so I knew I could dash through her and kill her. I didn't see the sticky bomb in time, but luckily my dash had reset so I could dash away to safety and heal up again. 
again. Everyone's on the respawn. I deflected out of panic there from sniping and I saw Roadhog, so I thought he might hook me. It was probably more of a panic deflect than anything. I maybe didn't have to do that. I saw Widow on low health there, so I moved in to take that kill. I was quite confident with that, so I knew that I could get the dash reset to dash out again. Tracer was hacked then, so that makes the job really easy. She can't do much when she's hacked at all. Sombra's EMP'd people. I see two squishies in the back that are hacked, so I move in, even though it's quite late, and ult because I know they're helpless. I move in to get Honzo in the room, and I see Roadhog in there. I try to back out because I know that Roadhog could hook me at any point. I probably could have finished him, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So I've killed about three people with that ult, and then Roadhog died as well, a teammate finished him off. So now we're just waiting on them to respawn again. Soldier ult, so I panic deflect. Get into cover. We have a shield generator, so once again looking at the health. You could see a lot of spam there, so I try to direct it at one target. Don't just move it aimlessly. Tracer's gonna 1v1 me. see the combo there of alt fire and melee. So that just about covers it for my Genji guide. As you can see the gameplay wasn't perfect but hopefully it covers a lot of questions that I'm being asked. I probably have missed something so please feel free to ask in the comments if there's anything you need to know. I'm trying to be as interactive with everyone as I can so like replying to comments and messages so please don't hesitate to comment and ask me a question. I've only been doing this for about two months and already have over 300 subscribers, which is more than I thought I'd ever get, so thank you so much for that. I'm going to do a guide on how to climb the competitive ladder soon, so watch out for that one. And if there's any other guide you'd like me to do, then please feel free to suggest it in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.